So I want to go ahead and talk about the Real Housewives of Potomac because Dr. Wendy to you, sweetie, has saved the ratings. OK, she gave the ratings a boost, which they needed because you guys are not watching the show. Can we have a conversation real quick? OK, can we talk about the reason why y'all not watching? OK, y'all just watching the YouTubers or you guys are pirating it on y'all's favorite websites. I know what y'all doing, OK? Anyways, Dr. Wendy has saved uh, the show and its ratings because remember on last week's episode where uh, Dr. Wendy to you, sweetie, really got Giselle, the last lady of Potomac together? Well, y'all, um, that really did the show some justice, okay? It did the show some justice because this past episode was the highest rated episode of the season, right? With 1.067 million viewers, according to Ratings Bravo on Twitter. Now, this is really good, okay? This is really good because I've been talking about uh, the flop uh, ratings for a couple of weeks now. They started off at a million, and then they went down to 900,000, and then they went down into the 800,000s, and I was like, okay, like, this ain't adding up, okay? This is not adding up. The show is really good. However, the people are just not watching, and you can't cite that Potomac is a new show anymore because we are six seasons in, okay? They have the most veterans out of any housewife show this far into the show. And so it's not a lack of veterans. It's not a lack of OGs. Um, it's not a lack of, oh my God, the show is still new, okay? They have the flagship uh, time slot, Sundays at 8 p.m., which is the coveted time slot, which I think that should really go to uh, Beverly Hills. But they have everything that they need to be successful. And so I'm not really understanding where the disconnect is with the ratings. Maybe it's because of COVID and people are going back to work. Or maybe it's because people in general are just not watching TV anymore. I don't know what it is. However, Dr. Wendy to you, sweetie, her braids and that little Ivy Park outfit that she looked really cute in has been uh doing the show justice okay so the ratings are back up and i don't know if you guys caught the uh mid-season trailer we did like a little podcast about it um yesterday but the show looks good okay the show looks really good so make sure you guys are catching up with potomac congratulations to the ladies they definitely understand the assignment now moving right along speaking of potomac let's talk miss candace dillard bassett OK, let's talk Miss Candace Dillard because um she is itching. OK, Candace is itching right now for some attention uh, because Miss Jamel Hill went to Twitter. OK, and she told us that she was catching up on season five, which is the season where Monique uh, did the whole 180 degree wig shift on Candace. OK, and um, she had some opinions about it. So. Jamel said, my guilty pleasure summer watch is Rohop. I'm finally at the season five reunion where Monique brought the binder. Here's what I'm not understanding about their fight. When you dare someone to drag you and then they do exactly what you asked, how is that an attack? Jamel goes on to say, clearly grown women fighting is a terrible look, but there's blame on both sides. Candace is always telling people she's about that action. And then you get that action you asked for. So part of me thinks the real emotional trauma is losing the fight, not the actual fight. Hashtag Rohop. Mmm. Okay, y'all. Did Jamel lie? Okay, because to me, that was nothing but facts. She was spitting facts because I came on here on my platform and basically told y'all the whole entire season that, yes, Monique was wrong for shifting that girl wig like that. Okay, she was wrong for that. However... Um, you know, Candace is wrong too. She definitely contributed to the toxic relationship, okay, to the toxic situation. And so Jamel Hill told no lies, okay? She told no lies. And she has the same sentiments as a million other people who watched last season. Now, here's the thing that I really don't understand about the situation is that Candace decided to at Jamel and really get buck with it, okay? Nuck if you buck. She ended up saying, I messaged you on IG since you're too chicken shit to have your Twitter DMs on at Jamel Hill. Now, Candace, why did you do that? OK, why would you add that woman? She's literally just a fan asking questions and giving her opinion 
on the show like any other fan. And so why does she feel the need to take it upon herself to go into that girl's DMs and change her perception about what she watched on TV? That's Candace's problem, okay? You're always trying to change people's minds and you just need to bring it on down in the words of Miss Candy Burst Tucker. And so you guys let me know how y'all felt about the situation. Honestly, I am on Team Jamel, okay? And Candace really did not have to go at the girl like that talking about some chicken shit and this, that, and the third. Like, you're really doing the most, okay? You sound really bored. And quiet as is kept, instead of trying to change people's minds about what happened last year, how about you focus on what's happening this year? Because you're definitely involved in another, okay, another physical altercation with Miss Mia Thornton where apparently you're about to get a Caesar salad tossed to the face. Stay out of the past and focus on the present, okay? Let's focus on Drive Back and this album, okay? Let's make sure it sells. Let's make sure we sell more than a thousand copies. I'm just saying. Y'all let me know how you guys feel in the comments down below. All right, you guys. So before we log off, of course, I want to talk about something a little bit different, okay? Let's talk about some music news. So if you don't know already, the MTV VMA Awards airs on MTV, of course, on September 12th. And I'm super excited because my favorite artist of the moment is not only performing, but she's hosting, right? Miss Doja Cat. If you have not heard Doja Cat's album, Planet Her, what are you waiting on? Okay, what are you waiting on? This is literally the album of the moment. Doja Cat is the next Supreme. She is the best female rapper out right now. Argue with your mama, okay? Argue with your mama. Anyways, Doja Cat is going to be performing and hosting the show. We're also going to be able to see Miss Chloe Bailey, who will be performing her first solo single ever at the VMAs. And then, of course, we're going to see the very controversial Lil Nas X, okay? And I've recently become a fan of Lil Nas because he is just not afraid, okay, of the uh, trolls and the homophobia. So I love it. Anyways... There's one person who I've noticed that is not performing, and that's Normani. Okay, where's Normani? Normani, where are you, sis? Now, if you guys don't know, Normani just recently came out with a song with Cardi B called Wild Side. A lot of people thought it was a sample, including me, of Aaliyah's One in a Million, but apparently her camp came out and said that this is not a sample, honey, which I find that really, really, really hard to believe. Because if you listen to the song, it's basically one in a million. But anywho, the song did okay in its first week. I believe it debuted on the Billboard chart at 14. But ever since then, y'all, it's been a flop, okay? Nobody is listening to that song. And mind you, it's a really cute song, okay? Not a bad song, beautiful gowns. And the video is even better, okay? The visuals are sickening. However, the people are just not feeling it. So, y'all, Normani did a whole entire interview, okay, about her flop era, basically, okay, because the song is flopping. Ain't nobody really checking for the girl right now, uh, which is kind of sad because I am a fan of Normani. I think she's a beautiful, talented woman. However, I am a little bit disappointed in her career because if you guys can remember, she released this song called Motivation and she was never to be found after that, okay? We thought that she was finally going to come out and be the Beyonce of the group. Y'all know she was a part of Fifth Harmony. Um, and then she went solo and did a couple of, you know, collaborations. And then she did Motivation, performed at that year's VMAs, which I believe was in 2019. And then after that, she just fell off, okay? We didn't hear nothing from her until Wild Side. So now in today's time, she's just a little bit confused as to why the VMAs have not asked her to perform and she's struggling with uh, validating her work and her art. Check this clip out. I'm obviously disappointed about it. You know, I, this last week I've just been in my head. I love to feel noticed and for my work to be validated. Now, I love Normani, and I would love for her to be able to have the opportunity to perform at this year's VMAs. However, girl, you just going to have to work a little bit harder, okay? And I don't know if it's her team, if it's her label. I'm being prone to believe that it's her label that's really holding her back. But you're not releasing enough songs, and you're not, you know, coming out with enough hits 
to warrant a definite spot at an award show, if that makes sense, okay? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I definitely want her to perform, but I don't know. I just feel like Normani's too sporadic, okay? Like, girl, where is the consistency, right? Anyways, y'all let me know how you guys feel about the situation. Do you want to see Normani host or perform, excuse me? And uh, what's going on with Candace and Jamel, right? What is going on? Like, Candace, bring it on down, all right? Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and log off. Love you guys. And don't forget to create a great day.